Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Blade Bias. Happy Easter to any of you that celebrate. Uh, I hope you enjoy your holiday weekend. I had a pretty good weekend, actually. I'm gonna, if you allow me to ramble for a little bit, I went to see the Mario movie, and it was, it was pretty good. I have to admit, if it wasn't Mario, and there weren't any, like, references or anything like that, I don't think it would have been the best movie in the world, and if you've seen it, I think you kind of understand what I'm saying. But it was fun to see all the little references packed in, and the voices weren't as bad as I thought, although Chris Pratt just just didn't work. I, I will admit, I kind of lost the Chris Prattiness of Mario, like, halfway through the movie, and I stopped, I, I forgot that it was him. But they start out the movie in such a strong way with his, in terms of his voice, and then he just goes to being Chris Pratt. If Again, if you've seen the movie, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, it was good, especially if you're a Mario fan, go see it. It's a fun little, fun little two-hour movie, I think. And the funny part of it is I got recognized at the Mario movie, which is weird, considering the relative small size of my channel. I was just sitting there talking to my friends after the movie, and I just hear, Ethan, is that you? And I look up, and here's someone who I don't know, and I'm like, what? Uh, but yeah, it was someone from the community. Shout out uh, Nathan, Nathaniel, Nathan, Nathaniel. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, today I am going to give you a bit of a deep dive into the amazing engineering behind the Cycloid V2. I know I'm a little late on the, uh, the one week with the Cycloid. That will be coming next video. In fact, it's going to be a pretty plastic based week. Because I also plan on doing a plastic battle song buyer's guide now that I have um, the Holy Trinity's updated products, essentially. Uh, the Calico, the Cycloid V2, the Edit Light, and the Squiddy A. So I'll be doing that, going over all their pros and cons, and which one you should get if you're in the market for a plastic battle song. So keep an eye out for that. But like I said today, I want to show you guys under the hood, essentially, of this battle song. Because this is... One of the best designed battle songs that I have ever seen. I was going to talk about how I enjoy it, but that's that's for the week with the cycloid video. It's fine. In terms of design and the amount of time that was put into the overall like engineering, as I'm going to call it, which, I mean, it technically is engineering, so yeah, that's fair. The engineering that goes into this battle song is some of the coolest that I have seen in the hobby yet ever. I just hit my camera. I hope that didn't mess up the frame too much. You know what? I'm just gonna... I don't... I can't see my screen, so I have to put my phone up and like... Yeah, I'm sure we're fine. Okay, so anyway. Because um, there's just so much cool stuff in this that I just really wanted to highlight. That I was so excited about before I got it. That I was so excited about when I got it. And that I continue to be excited about. Because it's just genuinely a work of art, the amount of time that Zippy put into everything in here. Starting off with these spacers. Now these spacers are incredible because they know hardware. If you're just a little patient with them, just come right out for free. No hardware, no screwdriver, no nothing. Pull it apart, channel or channwich comes apart, boom. You have disassembled your battle song for the most part. And this is where a lot of the magic happens because this is where all the weights go. And you can see my actual preferred balance profile. Uh, spoilers for the I Spent a Week with the Cycloid video. I've removed a disc because you can do that. You can do whatever you want with this thing. You could remove every single piece of metal in here and make it the most blade biased thing on the planet. You probably shouldn't do that but you can do it if you want. And now that I have it off, I can just open up this little baggie and let's let's get a ball out, you know? And then since this is like a rubbery material, no tools or anything, pop that in with my thumb. So, okay, actually, this is where you want a tool, to be honest, because popping it in with your thumb doesn't feel the best. My hands have felt better in the times that I have uh, been messing with the cycloid, but we just take a little, it doesn't even have to be a tool. It just has to be a hard thing of, 
or hard surface of some sort to help you push the ball in. Also, why is this not going in? Hello? There we go. And it just slots in there, and boom. I've just added handle bias to my cycloid. It's, it's just, it's so cool. And then I can just, if I'm, oh, I don't want that anymore. Boop, there it goes. There goes the handle bias. We're back to my preferred balance. Like, holy cow, it's so cool. And what's even cooler about it, the fact that you can just, you have such granular control over your, your weights and your momentum and everything, is the fact that it holds the channel together. First of all, you have this connector here, which sort of provides like a pseudo lock for when the, the thing's out. Like, it'll stay together using that lock, which is pretty cool. But you can also separate it, clean out the insides, whatever you might want to do by separating the spacers and your handles lock it back together, and then the way that it's held in is with this spindle. If you're a fan of Lexus cars, you will recognize the spindle immediately. I don't know why I added that in there, but <laughs> whatever. Um, and it, you can see how the mechanism holds, because I'm sure your first thought, it was absolutely my first thought, was how does that work? What happens if you drop the ballast song and the spacer falls out? I can say with confidence that, that is not going to happen. I have actually beat this thing on concrete more than I have beat, um, hmm, more or about the same that I beat my edit light. My edit light has taken some damage here. Like it's got a little chip in the blade. It's got some rough spots in the end of the handles. Otherwise it's held up really, really well. And even my original edit has held up really, really well. Despite this crack in the handle that I have, Dropping it on concrete is no problem, and it still is still is going strong. Again, it does take chunks out, like there's a chunk out here, which is sort of a thing for durability, but whatever. I'm talking about durability, what was I even talking about beforehand? All right, dropping it. Yeah, we're not even talking about durability. I mean, while we're on the topic, the fact that these are rubber makes them extremely impact resistant, and they don't even scuff up that much. Like, you can see there's a few, like like weird spots on it where you can tell it's hit concrete, but it's not, it doesn't feel bad at all, which is amazing. Um, but th the spacers don't come out. And I'm sure you could tell that by the relative time that it took to get it out in the first place. Like this is not just a simply pull it once and you'll have it out kind of deal. You have to pull with a pretty significant amount of force and wiggle back and forth the whole time just for it to make very little progress it also kind of hurts your hands so i highly recommend getting like a cloth or something but we're just gonna yeah we're just gonna raw dog it i guess <laughs> is that why i say that um <laughs> yeah so these things hold up pretty well that i'm such a fucking idiot but you got the spindle in there, which means that it's not going to pull apart because there is no way that this plastic is going to warp enough for that to bend around this and then like come apart this way. And as far as coming apart with this sliding out, if you're dropping this thing and these are sliding out, it's, it's sort of your fault. <laughs> it's kind of like the Squiddy B. You know how the Squiddy B has that nose pin and it can get like knocked out of place? Usually that doesn't happen in one drop. It's over multiple drops. So I feel like even if these did move, which I don't feel that they will because there's so much friction and I believe that the rubber is being deformed a slight bit to create that tight fit. But even if they did start coming out, you would notice it. Like you would notice your spacer hanging out like halfway and then, oh, I can fix that. But then the, the spacers aren't only cool for their, their structural support of the, the rest of the ballast song. Um, or protecting the ends of the handles or the weight distribution, although all of those are cool things. You can customize it however you want. I can take my green spacer, put it on the gray handle if I wanted. Look at that. Now I've got a bit different of a look. In fact, maybe a look that I kind of prefer. No, I'm just kidding. I don't prefer this, but I'm going to do it for the rest of the video just because haha -ha, goofy funny be a little, I'm a quirky, you know, be a little quirky. There we go. And now it's, now it's different. And now you can hear it's a bit, the tolerances are a bit like crap, but guess what? 
Oh, this handle's loose. No tools. Finger tighten that screw. Finger tighten that screw. It actually really fucking hurts. Okay, wait, did I put them together wrong? Wait. No. No, the gray handle's just really loose. Um, ow. <laughs> well, you can finger tighten it. Just trust me when I say that you can do it. Um, but I can't right now because my fingers are kind of already raw from <laughs> pulling out the spacers. Just use a cloth. Do as I say, not as I do, you know. But that's what we have this tool for. We can just tighten that up a little bit. And now suddenly we have a really good put together ballast song. I mean, it's gonna have tap, obviously, because it's a it's a plastic ballast song. But now I've just changed the customization of my ballast song, and it's throwing me off. You can tell because I usually look for the green spacer for the safe handle, and now that's the bite handle. But oh come on, I've been working on that trick. Oh come on, don't let me down now. There we go. Um, so yeah, you can, I've been working on a lot of stuff. I'm excited to make my next flipping clip because I think I have a lot of cool stuff to show off in terms of my flipping. Shit. Or maybe I don't. Maybe as soon as I go to show you guys, it's just, okay. Yeah, I'll take that for what, uh, I'll take that to just say shut up. But let's talk, let's not talk about the spacers anymore because we also have these little things. These are little O-rings that kind of stop the screws from spinning and they act as a better Loctite than the old vibration dampening system on the Cycloid V1 did because I never have to tune this thing other than when I take it apart. If you take it apart and you flip it around a little bit without the spacer, it does kind of loosen up, but you shouldn't be doing that anyway, so it's not like a, a big deal whatsoever. But they, they work really well as Loctite. It kind of keeps the the pivot from spinning and it's, it's pretty great. The tang pins are really great because these I assume are printed into the blade itself rather than inserted like in a metal tang pin, which usually is prone to failing. This is just a part of the structure that sticks out. Again, I'm assuming maybe Zippy is going to correct me in the comments, but it's just a part of the blade. There's no insert that's going to, it's not going to fall out or anything like that because it's literally a part of the blade, whereas most normal tang pins aren't. They're press fit in, kind of like Zen pins. Um, and they work really, they feel really good. They stop the balisong really nicely. You would think that it flexes a little bit, but there's not too much of that. It just, it feels really nice. And then finally, the blade, the blade thing. You can take out all of these balls, although it's very difficult. I will say that. You can take out all these balls and then you can take out the blade insert itself. It's just like you have such granular control over your flipping. It's really crazy and really cool to see. I'm so, so impressed with the engineering behind the Cycloid V2. And I hope that you are too. Um, I will do a video eventually taking the thing fully apart and looking at it, looking at the, the washers and the the bearings and all that, because Zippy did provide me with some extra lock nuts to put back on after I do that. But I'm not going to do that yet because I still want to kind of keep its original tune that it had because I'm still kind of in the evaluation phase. If I decide to do... Pro this thing will probably get a quick draw, I imagine, at the very least, um, because quick draws seem to be the way that I'm moving towards reviewing things. So, yeah. Really, really cool. Hope you're impressed. Go pick up a Cycloid V2. This thing is so fun. Or if you want to know which plastic ballast song is right for you, stay tuned on this channel on Thursday, and I'll have that buyer's guide out. But if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go talk about my week with the Cycloid. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.